American poker pros, shrewd international players, have come to the jungles of Costa Rica to battle for a prize pool worth nearly a quarter of a million dollars. The World Poker Tour gets wild in Costa Rica! The World Poker Tour travels the globe featuring some of the biggest games and largest payouts on the planet. Tonight, we're in San Jose, Costa Rica at Casinos Europa Card Club for another exciting event in this high-stakes journey around the world. You'll see top poker players fighting to win their share of a prize pool approaching a quarter of a million dollars. The buy-in here is $500. But like so many quarters in a video game, some people kept putting in more cash just to play a bit longer. In the end, only six players survived to compete at the WPT final table. The last person standing will face off against 11 other title holders for millions in winnings at the World Poker Tour Championship at the end of the year. Now, down to the WPT Arena, where poker champion Mike Sexton and Hollywood home game master Vince Van Patten are standing by to call tonight's action. Hi, everyone. Welcome to the World Poker Tour. We are in beautiful San Jose, Costa Rica, for the final table of Casino Europa's Costa Rica Classic. I'm Mike Sexton, along with Vince Van Patten, and we are going to see a tournament today that could be as wild as the countryside. Well, Mike, you're absolutely right. And just being down here in Costa Rica proves to me that the World Poker Tour truly lives up to its name. I mean, last week we were in the Caribbean. It was fantastic. And this week we're in Central America. I mean, we truly travel the globe, going to the world's biggest tournaments and, and watching the greatest players in the world, bar none. Well, the great thing about this is, is that our fans get to see the different style of play from players around the globe. Today, we have two Americans at the final table, including poker great Dewey Tomko, two native Cubans, a native guy from Costa Rica, and an Ecuadorian. So this is going to be an exciting championship. Let's meet the players. The person that's leading this whole tournament is Don Luis, and he, believe it or not, owns the casino. And he now is a major chip leader in this tournament and has a great chance to win this championship event. You're going to really enjoy watching it. Number one seed is my friend Dewey Tomko. Well, Dewey Tomko is a superstar poker player in America. No player at the table has the experience of Dewey Tomko. I rate Dewey a real good shot to win this event. Seed number three is R.A. Head. R.A. is a very fun person to watch play poker. He moves his chips. He's not afraid to bet his chips. He's a gambling kind of man. In seat number four, there's Jaime Atneloff. Jaime's been traveling to the States for over 20 years playing the major poker tournaments. He's an experienced player. Also look for him to play pretty well today. Another crafty player, Jamie Ligator, seat number five. And Jamie Ligator, another one. He's come to the States on numerous occasions to play the major championships, so he also has experience. He's not afraid to move his chips in either. Seat number six is Jose Rosencrantz. Jose Rosencrantz is a very solid player, what we call solid. Generally, if he sticks his chips in the pot, he's going to have a hand. Very successful in tournament play. He is also going to be a tough player to beat today. So even though these guys are only starting with 30,000, where Don Luis is starting with 180,000, I give him a shot to win. So you're going to see an opportunity to see some pretty good poker here today. It's going to be a very exciting event. Now, usually in the beginning rounds, guys play a little tighter. You know, it's like two boxers coming out, just sparring, just watching the other players. They don't play real aggressively. This is really exciting, Vince, to get to see these players' cards because the viewers are going to get a nice insight on what these players are actually thinking. Here we go. Actions on Jamie Lidger. He folds. Jose has a three and a ten. Different suits you can't possibly call. Dewey Tomko folds and Luis folds. We're down to the Battle of the Blinds. Now, R.A. Head is from Florida. He's raising on the King Seven offsuit. R.A. makes it 6,000. And Jaime Are is going out. R.A. Head takes down the first pot. Simple as that. The first pot. Well, Vance, not only is poker played all over the world, but the version we're playing today is literally the game of choice everywhere. Yeah, it's a great game. It is the Cadillac of poker games. That's what they call it. It's a fantastic game. But for those of you who are not quite familiar with this game, we're going to give you a little lesson on how to play No Limit Texas Hold'em right now. To start, each player is dealt two cards face down. Then, five community cards, cards everyone can play, are placed face up on the table. Each player combines their two hidden down cards with the community cards to make their best five-card poker hand. And 
betting is really what this game is all about. Let me explain. You get your first two cards, you make a bet. Then the dealer puts the first three community cards on the table. In poker, we call this the flop. They bet again. Then the dealer puts the fourth community card on the table. This is called the turn card. Once again, big round of betting. Then the last card. We call this the river. It's turned up on the table. They make a big last round of betting. Turn your cards over. You see who wins. They call it no limit hold'em because there's no limit on how much a player can bet. At any moment, he can declare that he is all in and push all of his chips into the pot. Right, and that makes chip position, or how many chips you have, very, very important in this game. Well, even though Luis has a big lead over all the other players, remember, Vince, it only takes two pots where if you beat this same guy two hands in a row, you're going to have the chip lead over him. Well, that's the great thing about what we're playing. We're playing table stakes, and you're absolutely right. You win two hands, and you're right back in there with a chip leader. The action is going to be on Jamie to speak first. He only has a six and a deuce. He's throwing his hand away. Jose also has an equally bad hand. He's chucking his hand. And Dewey Tomko with an ace-eight also folds his hand. And button. Luis, surprisingly, on the button folds a king high. We're all back in. to ready for action. Look at this, Vince. In. Okay, well, he's picked up ace king, big <laughs> slick, and he's going all in. Yes, sir. He's come out with both guns blazing for all his chips. And he's going to win it right there. R.A. says his initials stand for ready for action. Well, you know, he has nine children, you know, so he was definitely ready for action a long time ago, this guy. Looks like to me he was, he was in a lot of action. <laughs> he's got nine kids. I'll probably play poker like a rattlesnake. If I get the opportunity, I'll certainly bite you. Okay, R.A. picks up the pot. He inherits the button this time. Now, the button, you're going to be hearing a lot about the button in this tournament, is that little white hockey puck that moves around the table each hand. It tells the dealer where to start dealing. And the two players to the left of the dealer button have force bets called blinds. The blinds make sure there is action and money in the pot on every hand. Well, it's going to be on Jose first. He has a bad hand. He's going to throw it away. Dewey with a king five also throws his away. And here's Luis. He throws his hand away, and here comes R.A. raising okay, another pot. Luis. Okay, he has a pretty good hand. He has a jack and a king. He's going to raise it 5,000 to make it seven. Uh-oh, he's heading for white water here, though. Is that 7,000? And Jaime goes all in over the top. Jaime, he's raised he him back over the top, Vince, for all his money. He's got about... Jamie's going to fold. And R.A.'s not going to like this. Look at the look on his face. Well, Jaime has an ace-queen. It is a stronger hand. He's saying, you know what? I'm going to put a little spice in your coffee. $26,000. Oh, he's got a problem, Mike. Well, it's, it's not much of a problem, really. Most pros would throw that hand away, but people that like to gamble want to get in there and mix it up. You know, he may say, well, you know, I'll just gamble right here. What's the difference? He's looking back down again. See if that King Jack's turned into a pair of kings or something, I guess, Vince. I don't know. Yeah. He's throwing huh? it away. The pot goes to Jaime. I'll tell you, I'm impressed with Jaime's play. I'm not kidding you. He won me over last night when he lost with two aces against two kings, and the guy didn't flinch, I'm telling you. I tip my hat to the guy. The majority of players, especially the professional players, look at me like a little fish in the wrong river. Now, Dewey Tomko will be the first to speak in this hand, and Dewey, as you know, Vince, is a two-time world champion runner-up. Yes, he's a runner-up. A lot of people call him the Anna Kornikova of poker because he's never won the big one. Dewey's played very conservatively so far today. And he throws his hand away. Now here comes Luis. Now he has a nice playable hand of 9 8 of diamonds, and he calls a 2,000. Calls 2,000. An RA right behind him with a pair of fours. Now that's a pretty solid hand, a pair of fours, six handed. And he just calls. He just calls. Doesn't raise with it. I'm trying to flop a set, as we say, looking for a third four in the flop. Now here's Jamie Ligator, the small blind. He has a king seven of clubs. I'll be very surprised if he doesn't put another thousand in there with this hand. I don't know if he's going to raise it. Yeah, he does. He right. And look at Jose. Quickly grabs all his chips and moves into the center. He moves over the top of all the limpers. Usually when you see people limping in, you want to take advantage of that. In the meantime, take a look at Luis's face. He's got that look on him like, uh, you raised the boss here? I mean, uh, yeah. the nerve of you. Look at him. Do you know who I am? Yeah. <laughs> look. <laughs> and he folds his hand. And R.A. folds. Jamie folds. 
Jose Rosencrantz makes a very nice re-raise of all the limpers and wins the putt. So Jose takes that hand down, very nice move. But you know what? He smiled at the hand, almost apologetic to Luis, the casino <laughs> owner. Hey, you got to be careful about raising those bosses. You know. <laughs> He's got to come back in here and play the bar. So it's going to be up to Jaime to act first. Action's on him. He folds. He has nothing. And here comes Jamie. Now, Jamie's picked up ace, nine, a spade. And he's raising the pot. He comes in for 6,000. Well, you got to do it. You got an ace, nine, a spade. That's a strong hand. Jose folds. And Dewey folds. All in. Now, Luis. And Luis says all in. in. Yep. Yeah, he's going all in. He has a king, queen, a spade. Very strong hand in that position. Now, notice, Vince, he made an all-in declaration. Now, look at R.A. here. R.A.'s, make, RA's picked up the king, jack, of diamonds. Now, look, and R.A. has a problem because he has king, jack, of diamonds. That's pretty strong, too. That should be no problem at all. Oh, he has man. no business playing this hand. And look at this. He's playing it. He's calling. He wants to gamble here. He has gone all in for his money after a raise and a re-raise on a king, jack. This is a poor play Jamie's throwing his ace, nine, a spade away now. As he should. Okay, they're going to turn it over. You're right. R.A. is going to be a long shot here. And here they go. We have king, queen of spade against king, jack of diamonds. Luis is in a dominating position, as we say, right now. Well, Vince, R.A. Head has crawled out on a limb early in this tournament. And the big boss here, Luis Milanis, is looking to shove him right out of the tree. Well, don't go away. We'll be right back with all the action from Costa Rica right here on the World Poker Tour. play because poker's not a scratch-off ticket, a half-court jumper, or a knock on wood. It's no game of luck, poker. It's a game of patience and well-timed aggression. We know when we play, a little luck helps. But luck can't explain why final tables have so many familiar faces. We play at FullTiltPoker.com. Christopher Columbus discovered and named Costa Rica. When he landed in the New World, Columbus's crew tore leaves from trees and fashioned cards to play a game. Perhaps they should have named it Costa Rica. Welcome back to the finals of the Costa Rica Classic in San Jose, Costa Rica. I'm Vince Van Patten, alongside my buddy Mike Sexton. And I'll tell you, my pick to win this tournament, R.A. Head, the Floridian 78-year-old player, has gone all in with King Jack of Diamonds against Luis Milani's King Queen of Spades. And it looks very bad right now for R.A. <laughs> well, he says his initials stand for ready for action. But I'm sorry to say that unless he gets very lucky right here, all he's going to be ready to do is leave. Okay, let's watch. Only jacks. No jack. How about a jack? No jack. A jack, man. A jack. And the flop comes 10-8-4. Uh, R.A. Head is in big trouble right now. Next card. The six comes off. He's going to have to have a jack or he's going to be eliminated. No, he's not going to do it. He does not do it. R.A. Head from Miami, Florida. Your pick to win, Vince, is out in the sixth position. He thought Luis was making a move in that spot. He thought the King Jack of Diamonds was the best hand. Yep. He made a misread there. He was incorrect in his assessment. He had a King Jack of Diamonds. Okay. Luis had the best hand. The best hand held up. And our chip leader, the rich get richer. Now, Vince, I'm sure our viewers are wondering, is this a little suspicious? Does it look funny that the casino owner is still here at the final five and has a massive chip lead. Fact is, this is his passion. He loves to play these tournaments. And yes, it just shows you that an amateur, a guy who loves the game, who's not a professional player, can reach the final table and can do it. Yo voy a ser. I'm going to give it everything I've got. If I've got to bite someone's ear like Mike Tyson, then I'm going to bite someone's ear. Now, that is the owner of Casinos Europa, the host of the Costa Rica Classic, threatening to bite the ear off a competitor. And if that's what it takes to win, Mike, good luck. Well, Luis Milanes is a colorful guy, but he puts on a tremendous tournament. Oh, yeah, sure I mean, does. the players love to come down here to Costa Rica. Our own Shauna Hyatt looked inside Casinos Europa, and she took her own walk on the wild side of poker. Poker in the wild. We're in Costa Rica, known for its volcanoes, jungles, and surf. 
where some of the wildest poker games you'll ever see will happen right before your eyes. Those guys are crazy down there. Don Luis has a huge chip lead going into the final table. It's pretty wild down here, poker. Nestled in San Jose, the capital of Costa Rica, Casinos Europa has some of the wildest poker games in the world. While Costa Rica is known for its natural beauty and diverse wildlife, the poker tournaments at Casinos Europa are known for two things, service and camisas. Camisa! Camisa! Camisa Maximo, por favor. Camisa! <laughs> Keyword that I've learned is Maximo Camisa. I don't want to hear that word. That's meaning you lose your shirt, and I don't want to get that far down. <laughs> Camisa! Camisa means rebuy in Spanish, and the $500 Costa Rica Classic is the only World Poker Tour event that allows rebuys, and there are a lot of them. Sign my life. <laughs> Seven. As the players struggle to stay in the game, the girls from the Toby modeling agencies keep the cervezas coming. With all it offers, Costa Rica has been described as a slice of poker heaven. The people are very friendly, very sociable, very respectful, ah, beautiful women. There are four women to every man. And at Casinos Europa, you don't have to wait until the afterlife to enjoy it. Just like America, Coca-Cola, beautiful women, and poker. This is all you need. In Costa Rica, pura vida means good life. And this is a good life. So Luis, the casino owner, is pushing him around. Well, he's the major chip leader at this stack. He's built his chips up to well over 200,000 now for a commanding lead. Action will be on Jamie. He folds. Jose has a jack nine, different suits. And folds. Dewey folds, and here comes Luis. He's calling with a ten calls. deuce of diamonds, a very famous poker hand. Well, that's uh, all Luis he's got. It's a ten deuce, Small and he's calling line. with it. He has Doyle Brunson, the great player, had ten deuce, made it very successful. Here's the flop. Flop is ace nine three, and look at Luis. He comes firing out there, seven thousand. He's looking to take command of this game. He's won the pot. You're right. He's just pushing it in. He's saying, hey, listen, guys, you know, I'm taking this game unless you have something good. Well, there was our man Luis picking up a pot with a 10 deuce of diamonds. He must think he's Doyle Brunson or something. No, you're right. They call him an amateur player. This guy is pushing these guys around. He's pushing the pros around. This guy is very impressive. Well, on the other hand, we have Dewey Tomko over there. Very conservative. Dewey's biding his time. Maybe he thinks he's an amateur. He's going to make mistakes later. That's when he's going to capitalize on him. Well, Dewey, I like to call him the phantom. You know, he keeps throwing away his hand. And once again, he throws away his he hand. throws it away. Luis throws it away. They all throw it away. The battle of the blinds. Jamie calls another 1,000 with a jack nine of club. So we're going to see a flop. Against an 8-3 of Jose. Jamie, the small blind calls the 2,000. Jamie and Jose. So the flop comes queen, four hands. deuce, no help to either player. Now there's Eight. Jamie. He's bet 4,000. Jamie bets 4,000. And Jose, Jose calls, calls it. 4, Look at this play here. Jose has called 4,000 with a three and an eight. Now, ladies and gentlemen, he's not calling to try to make any kind of draw or any kind of hand. He's playing the man. He's playing here to try to take this pot away from this guy on 4th or 5th Street. Turn card is the six. The six comes six. off. Now, Jamie checked. He's going to take a steal. Jamie Look at Jack. this. He does. He's bet 10,000 at this pot. Bet Whoa. 10, and he's going to win it. This is a, an amazing play by Jose Rosencrantz right here. He called on the Jose flop with absolutely Rosencrantz. nothing, Vince. Yeah. I guess he was just setting him up, just waiting for one play. He was playing the person, not the hand. An amazing play by Jose Rosencrantz. I love the psychological part of poker. It's beautiful when you know what your opponent's thinking. That was an amazing hand by Jose. Beautiful bluff. You know something? If you weren't on the World Poker Tour, we wouldn't be seeing his cards. We'd probably think he has aces or kings or queens. That's a beautiful thing. When you can see these cards and see the instincts these players have to make those kind of plays, you can really see what championship poker is all about. Okay. There's Luis, King Deuce. He folds his hand. And now here comes Jaime. 
Jaime's picked up an ace jack. Looks like he's raising. Yes, he's come in for 6,000. Jose Fold. 6,000. Wow, notice Jose Fold an ace nine there, Vince. Yes, he did. Now Dewey, he's going to call because he has a pretty Small strong hand this time. Away. Ace ten of hearts. Dewey, Here comes Dewey. He's finally in the pot. He's got ace ten. He's up against ace jack though. And the flop comes jack seven three. That's a big flop for Jaime. Top pair hearts, with an jack. ace kicker. Case, Dewey across. checks it. Dewey checks. Here comes Jaime. He's bet twelve thousand. And Dewey Tomko lays his hand down. Let me bet 10,000. Now, Vince, notice Dewey had a pretty reasonable hand, ace, ten of hearts. Some players would have moved all their chips in the middle. Now, Dewey Tomko, he likes to play after the flop. In other words, he likes to see flops and then play from there because he thinks he can outplay all his opponents from there. So you won't see him going in for all his chips when he's gambling before the flop. So the Phantom is not going to gamble today yet. Now, we're talking about a guy here that used to teach kindergarten, Vince. This guy was a kindergarten teacher for years. He gave up kindergarten to become a professional gambler and has been extremely successful at it. My biggest advantage with poker player is probably experience. Well, you know, you want to play solid, and that's what he does. He's waiting, 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 and uh, these pros have to change gears all the time. And I suspect when he starts getting some hands, he's going to change gears. So it's going to be up to no. Jamie right. first to act. Looks at his cards. He's got an ace. He's got an ace seven. With one of the two short stacks now. He's going to have to make a move here sometime. It looks like he's making it right now for everything. He's going all in. He has moved all in on ace high. Jamie Ligator. Jose Folds. Now look at this. Dewey. Dewey the Phantom has a pair of tens. He says count it down. Jamie Ligator just bet now all Jamie has more chips than Dewey, so if Dewey loses his pot, he'll be out of the tournament. But he's got two tens. He's on the short stack. I'll be very surprised if Dewey doesn't call this bit. Well, what are you waiting for? I mean, you got a pair of tens. Go with it. How many times do they have tens wired? It's pretty strong. Well, look, he, at him, look at him concentrating. He knows Jamie. gives him a lot of respect. He's the first one to come into the pot. But still, you're the short stack here in Dewey's spot. Looks to me like you almost have to play two tens here. Like you said before, he likes to look. He's throwing this away. I he can't believe this. He laid this hand down. Now that is pretty amazing to me too. Louise so is throwing his cards away. That's going to do it. Jamie's won the pot with a strong all-in raise. Well, Dewey Tomko sure made a big lay down there, Vince. Well, I give a lot of credit to Jamie. Went all in. He pushed his little friend, the Phantom Dewey, back into hiding. I'm not consistent at all. Some days I'm a pussycat and some days I'm a shark. Well, I know Dewey has a lot of respect for Jamie. Well, you got to recognize this. Good players can lay down big hands. Weak players call with most anything, but a good player can get away from a hand. Dewey decided to lay down that hand, and let's see what happens from here. Action's on Jose. He's got a 9-5. He folds. Now Dewey's got an 8-10. Now look at this. This is crazy. He's raising with this hand. Sure, he'll fold the tens, but he's going to raise with an 8-10 offsuit. To 7,000 total. Well, he might be steaming a little bit here, Vince. Yeah. And he's going to win the pot. He's going to win the pot. You're right. Absolutely right. Steaming. He's, he's steaming a little bit. He realized, hey, I should have been with the tens probably. And you know what? Even though I have nothing here, I'm going to raise it. I'm going to take a chance. I'm a little on tilt or steaming. And that means you're betting off of past emotions, mostly negative. Vince, if you are a professional poker player, there are no two ways about it. You must be able to control your emotions at the table. That's very true. But you know that, and I know that. But as Shauna Hyatt found out, talking to these professional poker players, they know that it's a lot easier said than done. Shauna. It's a jungle out there. If poker is the survival of the fittest, the player who controls his emotion is king. The player who does not ends up being a little lower on the food chain. When you lose a hand that you felt like you should win, that's your money going over to the other guy's stack. And there is an emotional connection. There is, there is a very primal thing that happens when your money is taken away from you. Sometimes you lose it. We're not robots here. We're people. It's an emotional game, no matter how you put it. Taking a seat at the poker table is the start of two battles. The first against your opponents, and the other against yourself. 
Lose a hand and you can come back. Lose your cool and face the consequences. But if the twists of the game turn your world upside down, only you can put it right again. Take a deep breath. And take the time to remind yourself who's in charge here. If you can win that battle and master your emotions, then when it's over, you can let it all hang out. Yes! Right back with more from Costa Rica after this. Here in Costa Rica, it's legal to carry a gun, but in the casino, you have to check it at the door. Welcome back to the Casinos Europa at the Costa Rica Classic. I'm Vince Van Patten. And I'm Mike Sexton. And our chip leader by quite a wide margin is Cuban-born Luis Milanes, the tournament host and the owner of Casinos Europa. This is pretty amazing. The rich just keep getting richer. Luis is <laughs> dominating this field. It's pretty amazing. Let's see if somebody could put a little dent in, make a little run at Luis, and knock out the guy they call El Nino. El Nino. Here we go. <laughs> And Luis has picked up nine eight of hearts, suited connector, pretty interesting hand he's calling. Look at look at Jamie. No, no, no. He bangs with all his chips in the pot with two eights. Jamie doing it again, going all in. Jose folds. Dewey Tomko folds. Jamie, look at her. All of Look at Luis folding, looking a little me. irritated. <laughs> he's saying, hey, I got some rifles in the basement. Don't be messing around with me. Well. He's got that kind of hand, a lot of chips. He wants to see a flop. It just pains him to throw that hand away, man. But, you know, impressive move by Jamie. Playing loosey-goosey. It is paying off for him. He really is. Playing well right now. You know, sometimes you play with reckless abandon. You just, you know, you win a hand, you push it in all this next hand. These the guys know it. They do call level. it, and they the lose. Hand, They're the eliminated. There's a lot at stake 3, here. One false move. This isn't a limit game. This is no limit. And it's scary at times. <laughs> Okay, you see Louise is getting touched up there. You know, that's what hey, you call a, a poker makeover. And they're polishing his baldness in the back of his head there. I don't think we're supposed to have makeovers in poker. Okay, with five players left, Louise is still our big chip leader with 220,000 in chips. Jaime, Jamie, and Jose all have the upper 30,000s, and Dewey's a low man with 20-some thousand. Thank you. Okay. And Vince, the price of poker has just gone up. The blinds are 1,500 and 3,000. Okay, that means that they're already involved in the pot. So the tournament won't last 25 days. It speeds up action. Luis is first to act here. He's picked up a 10 and a king. And look at this. He's going to raise with just a 10 king off suit. Jaime quickly folds. Now look at Jamie. No, Luis. Yeah. Jamie, no, Luis, he says, bang, he's coming over the top for all his money. This guy has a death wish, just <laughs> raising Luis. <laughs> now, Luis says, count him down. Now, it's going to cost Luis about 24 more thousand to call this. Now, I don't believe he should make this call. He's in the commanding lead. But on the other hand, the last hand, I think he was a little distressed. He limped in. He got re-raised. Well, yeah, you're right. I mean, he's got to be frustrated. He is going to call. He's tired of getting pushed around by Jamie. He did. He's got a couple hundred thousand dollars. What the heck? Okay. This is King 10 versus two queens. Jamie's a big favorite here. King 10. Jamie is on. You know something? Just drop a king there. And Jamie could be eliminated here. Let's see. Yeah, the, the flop comes 9-9-3. Nine, nine, three. Nine, nine, three. He's hanging around now. Queens. It's still very good for Jamie. Next card doesn't help him. Four okay, comes off. Card. Right now, the kingpin's going to need a king, or Jamie Ligonier's going to double up. So, Jamie's so done it. <laughs> Luis gives him a little clap. Very little, I may add. <laughs> now, quite frankly, I see the first leak in the dam here for Luis. That was a very bad move to call an all-in bet with a king-10. It's a difference, Vince, if you're moving your chips yourself. If you're the first one to get in a pot, and no limit hold'em, normally the first guy to bet wins the pot. 
You know, if you're betting your chips, you can't be faulted. When you're calling your chips off like Luis just did, it's a bad tactical move. It's a bad play. Luis paid the price. He doubled up Jamie Ligator. Jamie Ligator loves it when poker players from the U.S. and Europe bring their poker games to Costa Rica, especially when they bring their bankroll. A lot of foreign card players come and start playing the games here, and their first impression is that the Costa Ricans are crazy, that they're going to kill us, that they're going to clean us up. Believe me, 100% of them go away broke from here. In first sight, they think they found poker heaven, that they're going to move here and make a living out of poker, and they never do. I haven't found one. I'm not professional, so uh, I play for fun and I try to do the best I can. The pressure gets to me, though, once I get close to the goal, yeah. There are some days that I just play wonderful and some days I just really play stupid and I get out early in the tournaments and I'm not consistent at all. I'm a coward. I'm a big coward. <laughs> when somebody sends, says all in on me, I'm more likely to fold. For all the downplaying of his ability, Jamie Ligator belongs at this final table. His talents are the equal of any of his fellow Costa Rican poker players. We have some excellent players who give the appearance of being wild, but they're very controlled. They know what they're doing. They give that appearance, they make somebody feel at ease, and they just are excellent readers, they're excellent players, they're aggressive. We have excellent players here. Well, Jamie Lickiter, now that time he had a big hand when he raised with two queens there. Absolutely. I mean, he's showing that he has heart and he has guts and, and great imagination. I mean, it's, it's still very tough to make that play, and he's making it work for him today. The action's I mean, on him, and he folds. Jose folds, and Dewey folds, and now it's the battle, battle of the blinds. The Luis blinds and Jaime. And Luis, Luis calls, calls 1,500. Forget in this game, it could be all over. Anytime you move all in, you're flirting with death in this game. I notice the Luis has a four and a six. Three suits. And Jaime has a pair of threes. Reina Tres Dos, check, check. Now a five. Look at this. Luis just caught the inside straight. Right now, he has the very best possible hand that you can have. And he comes out and bets 3,000, a very small Luis bet, trying 3, to 000. throw the bait out there for his opponent. His opponent took the Jaime bait and called a 3,000. Last card is a king. Now this is interesting because it's kind of a milk bet before. You don't want to over bet. You want to get the guy to call because you have the absolute rocks, a cinch. He puts a stack out there. Looks like about 15,000. Now look at his face here. That's what we want to look at because he has the very best possible hand you can have. The man has got to be so excited. Look at him. He's got the cinch. He's got a guy that might call him. Who knows? He might raise him, he's thinking. This is why we, why we play poker. Well, Jaime only has a pair of threes. Jaime throws his hand away, and Luis shows him shows the four, the four and the six, six the best possible the hand. The straight, the nuts straight. Now, here's something I don't think a professional would do either. You don't show your opponent the nuts when they don't call you. Okay. Well, professionals don't own casinos either, so <laughs> what are you going to do? <laughs> well, you got a point. We are in the thick of it in the Costa Rica Classic on the World Poker Tour. We are back at the final table of the Costa Rica Classic. We still have five players left, and they are vying for the biggest slice of nearly $250,000. I'm Vince Van Patten, along with Mike Sexton, and we are here to call the action. Right now, the first place will get over $100,000, and we'll also get a guaranteed seat at the WPT Championship at Bellagio. And right now, it looks like Luis Milanes is dominating this field. Well, he's still our chip leader, but Vince, he's had some missteps along the way, but he's still well in command of this tournament. Let's watch this. Well, the action's on Dewey Tomka. Now, Dewey only has 19,000 in chips, and remember, it's 4,500 to play a round. So he's got to make a stand. Now, Dewey, Dewey formerly known as the Phantom, has just moved all in with King Jack of Diamonds. Well, I don't blame him at all with the King Jack of Diamonds. I'd have moved all in right there, too. But look at this. Here comes Luis. Luis has an ace jack, and he's and called Luis Dewey. Calls. That's an amazing call. And Jaime folds, and Jamie folds, and Jose folds. 
But you know what? He figures it's only about 19,000. And you know what? I could break him. This could be it for Dewey. This is actually a nice call by Luis right here. He's in a dominating position. It's Ace Jack versus the King Jack of Diamonds. Dewey Tomko needs some help, or he is going to be our fifth place finisher. It's Ace Jack versus King Jack. Here comes the flop. Okay, at this point, that doesn't help either player. Of course, it keeps Lewis in front. It actually gives Dewey a straight draw. He can win this pot with a 10 or a king right now. That's right. Open-ended. A 10. It's a miracle. And there it is. A miracle. Look at Luis. Look. Look at him. He's pat. He reaches. Now, he shakes his hand, but Luis can still win this pot if a king comes off. A queen comes off. It's a queen, so, so Dewey is going to double What up. are you going to do? I mean, you he catch the inside straight the, the hand before straight. that, and now this guy catches it on you. I mean, it's like poker justice. At this time, he's doubled up a very dangerous player. Dewey Tomko has doubled up. He is back in this competition. Dewey Tomko is a gambler. He's cashed in millions on the golf course, the sports book, and the poker table. He knows the way to win is to first lose your illusions about yourself. My strength is probably playing after the flop, after you see the cards. And my weakness is probably playing the way we are right now, just showdown poker. Basically, everybody moves in and, and prays. If Dewey knows himself, his opponents know him too. I think the best player on the table is Dewey Tomko. He always keep eye on Dewey. Dewey's a tremendous player. He's a dogs. Dewey Tomko is a gambler who doesn't take risks. He knows his strengths and he likes his chances. I think I got as good a shot as anybody. I'm going to try to do my best and I actually think I'll win. He knows in poker anything can happen. Whether it's right or wrong, I've got a game plan already established. It might work out, it might not, you know. There's times it hasn't worked out before. <laughs> If you look at Luis, he sure doesn't look like he's the major chip leader with over two to one chip lead over everybody because he just doubled up Dewey. He looks a little bit deflated to me. Well, he's still got 164,000. He's in a commanding lead. But you're right. You take a couple of hits here and there and you can get down on yourself. But do you know what? That's the mark of a great player, great athlete, whatever you want to call it, that they can come back. They have the composure. Well, let's see if that's an omen for Dewey. He's the first to act here and he picks up two sixes. Those sixes just seem to be pushed around the table now. He, now he just calls right there with two sixes. Uh -huh. Luis folds, and Jaime folds, and Jamie out of the small blind also has two sixes and called. Jamie calls from the small blind. And Jose blind. checks. Got the same so, identical hand. Here we go. So we have a three-way pot well, here. Jack, it's Jack, 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 Jack nine. nine. Suits. And Jamie checks, hold and Jose hold checks, hold and now it's up to Dewey. It's checked to Dewey. Now Dewey bets six thousand. Jamie folds, and Jose folds. And even though Jamie and Dewey had the exact same hand, two sixes, Dewey was the first one to bet at the pot. Goes to show you, once again, that position pays off, being in good position. Well, Vince, as we continue, the price of poker is going up. Absolutely. The blinds are now 2000 and 4000 Once again, blinds are when two guys are forced to put money in before they even get to look at their cards. All right, the action's on Dewey. Dewey folds. He had ace high that he threw away there. <laughs> Luis folds. Dewey and Luis fold. And look at this. Jaime moves all in with a 5-3 of spade. Jamie throws his hand away, and Jose Rosencrantz picks up two aces in the big blind. It's every poker player's dream. American Airlines, the mother of all hands. This has got to be a sickening feeling for Jaime. He thought he was making a good play. There's not many outs. Let's see what happens. Okay, well, he has a pair of fives. He does have certain outs here. He's got to get real lucky. He can catch a five or a three to crack these two aces. A seven comes off. Now he needs a six, a five, or a three to beat the two aces. He's been playing for a couple days. He's tired. He, can a miracle happen? That's what you're thinking. Events, as you know, in poker, anything can happen. Come on back to the Costa Rica Classic on the World Poker Tour.
We are back at the Costa Rica Classic in San Jose, Costa Rica. I'm Mike Sexton. Yeah, and I'm Vince Van Patten, and we are down to five players going on four, Mike. Well, Jaime Antenaloff was all in with a 3-5 of spade, and he ran into a buzzsaw when Costa Rican Jose Rosencrantz flipped over two aces. Yeah. I mean, he's going to need a lot of help to stay in this tournament. So he needs a six or a five or a three. Can Jaime make it happen? No. No. He doesn't do it. Oh. Jaime Antenaloff is our fifth place finisher. He will take home $11,510 back to Ecuador. Hasta luego, Jaime. You played great. It's instant death when you see that last card come up and it doesn't help you. The Aces are going to win for Jose. Well played hand. Jaime is out of this thing. Down to four players. Now, you got to change your strategy a little bit. you got to play a little looser. You know, a player gets eliminated. You try to, All the players are going to pretend like, oh, they're sorry, you know, tough luck. But actually, they're very happy. They're giddy. They're excited. They're like a bunch of gators in a swamp just waiting to pounce on the next prey. Well, out of these four players, three of them are from right here in San Jose, Costa Rica. We have one American left, Dewey Tomko from Florida. The action is going to be on Jose. He has Jack Deuce. He folds. folds. Dewey folds. Dewey folds. And Luis, Luis calls out of the small blind. blind. So we're going to see a flop between a battle of the blinds. Jamie checks. Okay, here's the flop. King, queen, six. Now look at this. Luis has flopped Flop two pair. Queen, it's extremely good, but he's checking. This is called a trap. He's trying to try to trap his prey here. He's yeah, he's trying to be a fox here. Check, check, it goes. Jamie checks, and Jamie checks behind him. Now he can't check again. You can only trap for so long. Now he four. is betting this time, and he's going to win the he pot that way. He fires out and bets this time. He shows the two pair. Well played by Luis. Mike, do you notice in poker there, there's a lot of talk about trappers and prey and foxes and snakes. There's a lot of animal references in poker. <laughs> well, Vance, I'll tell you, poker is like the jungle. It's survival of the fittest. Luis has about two. you got to go for the juggler if you want to be a champion. Okay, it's going to be on Jamie first to act. He went out. Jose has a pretty good hand. Ace-10, he's going to raise it. He raises on the button. Here goes 10, Dewey. Doesn't even flinch. Just stacks all off. 25,000. He moves all in. He has ace can clubs, a big hand. This is what he's been waiting for, Vince. Well, he's got the hand. He's got big slick. You can't wait any longer. That's a beautiful hand. He's raising it up big. 25,000 total. He has ace king of clubs. He's moved all in. And now, Jose, it's going to cost him 15,000 more to call. Now, what he's thinking about is how much is in the pot. Well, there's 40,000 in the pot. He's counting up what he's going to have left if he loses this pot. Still going to be over 40,000. Yes, he's going to gamble. I think it's the called. right call okay. in this spot Let's for him, even though he won't like what he sees. They turn it over. And, Ace yeah, he's a big dog at this point. Ace King of Clubs versus Ace Ten. It's not the hand he wanted Dewey to have. He was hoping Dewey had about a pair of eights or pair of nines, but he doesn't. Ace King versus Ace Ten. Jose stands up. He knows he's going to have to get very lucky to win this putt. Okay. Can he get lucky? That flop doesn't help him. The Ace King is going to be in front at this point. Jose sits back down. He knows he's got a big mountain to climb now. Look at his eight. The six of clubs six, comes off. That means Jose has, has two cards lead. he can win this pot with, the ten of spade or ten of yeah, diamonds. Yeah. That is all. The flush comes out, doesn't even need it, but he's going to win it. Dewey takes home this pot. Jose, very dejected. I don't think so because I don't think he's chastising himself. I think he played that hand correct. You have to raise on the button with ace 10. I don't blame him for putting 15,000 more in the pot when there was 40,000 out there. I actually think he played the pot correctly, and I think he thinks that as well. Just one of those things. He ran into a better hand. Dewey Tomko doubles up, but don't fault Jose for the way he played that hand. Well, Dewey does. Definitely wakes up finally, comes out. He's been very patient, and he caught a huge hand, a great hand to go all in on. Well, Vince, as you know, in No Lemon Hold'em, the tide changes quickly. Absolutely. You know what? You saw Jose was in second chip position to that last hand, and now he's in last position. And Dewey Tomko has doubled up to get back in the hunt here. And Jose's the first to act on this hand. And look at this. He's picked up a real strong hand. Ace, queen, different suits, and he's going to raise. He comes in for 15,000. Do he throw the 4 6 away? All in. Look at this. Luis is going all in with an ace jack. He makes a verbal declaration all in for all his chips. Jose calls him quickly and jumps up. Jose loves to stand up to see the flop. He's in a commanding position. Ace, queen versus ace jack. Well, Luis is in a pretty big underdog at this point. Let's see if they get lucky. Okay. The flop is 8-5-3. Jose's in the lead. 
Flop is 8-5-3, a good flop for Jose. Okay, now they both have aces, but of course, Jose has the better kicker. He's in his yellow bird lucky shirt. Is his luck gonna continue? Last card, yes it does. And an eight comes off, the board pairs eights. The board makes aces and eights, the dead man's hand, and on this particular hand, his kicker wasn't big enough, and Luis died on this pot. Yes, and look at the look on Luis. He's looking it over, he's counting how much he's given back. He looks a little perturbed here, Mike. You know, I'm not so sure if I'm in favor of that call, going all in in that spot with an ace-jack offsuit after Jose, a very solid player, uh, comes into the pot in front of him, but maybe he sensed Jose was steaming a little bit because he lost the last pot. Well, you know what I like about him? Luis doesn't hesitate. I mean, this is a gambling man. This is a man that says, yeah, I'm calling. What do I care? I own a casino. I can afford it. It takes a lot to intimidate a poker player. Holding. But with a massive chip lead, ruckus fans cheering his every move, and the fact that he owns the casino they're playing in, Luis Milanes believes he has a special relationship with a lady called Luck. I don't think I'm a good player. I think I'm a person that has a lot of luck. I think that the way you drive your car, play poker, and romance a woman are all the same in life. If you're going to seduce a beautiful woman, you have to have patience, you have to be persistent, and you have to have a little luck. But his opponents know there's more than luck behind Don Luis's success. He is very intimidating. He's very terrifying at the table. Reckless. <laughs> Don't worry, maybe you shouldn't show that in case he's watching. <laughs> but with luck at his side, most of the chips and a serious home court advantage, Don Luis is not about to change his style now. Once that last pot took a little chink out of the big stack that Luis had. Absolutely, and if you notice out there, they both, in that hand, had aces. But that kicker, that means that extra card you have that sometimes comes into play is Luis very, Paco very important. Luis Milanese, so here we go again. 000. Jamie Ligator, 40, here we go, Dewey Tomko folds. 89, now, Luis has just picked up a hand, yeah. Jack Tana Hearts, it's a pretty strong hand, and he is going to raise with it. Here he goes. Comes in for 10,000. And now Jamie, look at this. In the small blind, has picked up two kings. Okay, this is beautiful. You got two cowboys in your hand, and he's going all in, of course. He's come over the top of Luis one more time. This time he has a monster hand. The two cowboys. Jose's out. It's up to Luis. He's asking him, how much is it? Well, it's going to cost Luis. Jamie. Another 28,000 to call. Now, this is a pretty big chunk. It's nearly 30,000 to call. And he's going to gamble the jack 10. Now, here's something a pro would never do is call another 30,000 with a jack high in this spot. But Luis has opted to call. He's gambling here, Vince. Well, he loves to gamble. And you know what? It's been working throughout the tournament. This is the way he's been playing. So who knows? Well, he runs into a big duke here. It's a jack 10 versus two kings. He's a decided underdog to win this pot. He's going to need a lot of help. Jamie up from his seat looking. And the flop comes queen 7-3. No help at all. The two kings are a monster leader at this time. Turn card is a 10. But now a 10 comes off. Now Luis can catch a 10 or a jack to win this pot. Otherwise, Jamie Ligator will double up. And a queen comes off. Two ladies. He's not going to do it. Luis is like a statue. He does not move. He is stunned. He wanted this pot. Well, frankly, he did play that pot like an amateur. He shouldn't have called his money off with a jack high. He called another 30000 and now he's made a force out of both Jamie and Jose in the last two pots. Look, he got a little unlucky. He didn't know he was going to run into Cowboys, two kings. Can Luis hold out, or is the game going to get away from him? Well, we've got lots more poker from Costa Rica before we can crown a champion and give away $108,000 first prize. We'll be right back on the World Poker Tour. AbsolutePoker.net, please hold. AbsolutePoker.net, please hold. 
Absolute poker.net, please fold because it's too risky to chase a gut shot straight in early position with that much preflop raising. Absolute poker.net, you should probably hold. Absolute poker. Absolute poker.com. You in? In Costa Rica, Ticos means local or native. In poker, tourist means sucker. Don't be a tourist. Welcome back to the World Poker Tour. Tonight, we're in San Jose, Costa Rica for the final table of Casinos Europa's Costa Rica Classic. Casino owner Luis Milanes began the night with a massive chip lead and early knockouts put the $108,000 first prize well within his reach. But bad place and bad luck have left Milanes only a slim lead over tournament veterans Jose Rosencrantz, Jamie Ligator, and American professional Dewey Tomko. Four remain, but only one will survive poker's rumble in the jungle. Now, for the call of the action, here's poker champion Mike Sexton and Hollywood home game ace Vince Van Patten. Welcome back to the World Poker Tour and the Costa Rica Poker Classic. Well, Vince, we've seen a redistribution of wealth these last couple hands. Remember when we started the day, Luis had more chips than all five other players at the table. And as a result of the last couple pots, his graph is certainly going the wrong way. Well, I tell you, Luis still has the crowd on his side here. Meantime, Dewey Tomku folds. He folded an ace eight in a four-handed game. Green Luis fold. Okay, Jamie's going to raise this with a two and a king. Not much. King deuce of diamonds. Jamie raises it. Makes it 10,000 to go. Now, Jose has a king and a nine. What's he going to do here? It'll cost him six more thousand to call, and he's going to call. Jose calls. So we're going to see a flop. There's 20,000 in the pot. It's king deuce versus king nine. The flop comes queen eight six with two spades. Now, that flop doesn't help either player. No, it doesn't. Let's see if anybody bets at it, though. Jamie, Jamie checks. Check. Jose checks. Nope, it goes check, check. Now a five. Now a five comes off. That's not going to help either player yet, but look at this. He's checking. Jamie he checks. Goes, check. Jose checks behind him. Last card is a nine. And the nine comes off. That gives Jose two nines. And look at this. Jamie's betting it. Jamie He's trying to pretend 10, like he has a straight. Well, Jamie bet 10,000. Now, remember, there's 20,000 in the pot, so it's not and that big a bet. And Jose's going to call him. And With Jose a pair of nines, it's going to win this. Nice call by Jose. Look at this. Jose Jamie wins the pot. Jamie kind of disgusted, King saying King High didn't even want to show his hand at first. Last card. Give Jose credit there. There was a four card straight. You could have made a straight to the nine. You could have made a straight to the queen. Jose thought he was making a move there. Putt. He called him. Jose in second place. Come on, who Excellent play on the part of Jose Rosencrantz. For over four decades, Jose Rosencrantz has been playing and winning at poker. I'm a conservative player. I've been playing for many years. I expect to get more out of my cards and to be aggressive when I can. Jose has the mental toughness it takes to win in tight situations. Earlier this year, he notched a tournament victory in the U.S., despite starting the day outchipped 7 to 1. I love the psychological aspects of poker. I enjoy feeling what the other player feels and knowing what he thinks. I enjoy that a lot. So it's going to be up to Jamie to act first. Throws away his hand. Jose has the button. Jose has picked up Jack Nine. Offsuit, he's going to raise it up. He's bet 8,000. He's doubled the size of the blind. I like this bet. He didn't just limp in there and give him a chance. He's doubled a little bit to keep him guessing. Dewey folds. And Luis calls. Now, Luis has, just has a 7-6, but he makes that call, trying to get lucky on the flop. Here it comes. He's trying to see a flop. The flop is 5-5 five, 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 Jack. And this is very interesting. This makes two pair already Jacks in fives. Okay. Motown. That went check, check. Jose, five. check that flop. He has a full boat. Fives full of Jacks. He has a great He's hand. got this other guy betting into him for a bluff. Luis has bet 20,000. And Jose quickly Jose calls. calls. Last card is a king. 
Kane. Now Kane comes on the end. Well, Louise discussed it. He's checking this time. He's checking, which means virtually he's just giving up. Jose they both check. check. He has given up. Jose shows a jack for Jack. He shows a jack. He makes a full house. Absolutely, that's going to win this pot down. He got Louise trying to steal a little bit there. You know what? Things are turning here. The casino mogul's magic is starting to wear off. Well, with that hand, Jose takes the chip lead. He now has 138,000 in chips, and Luis is in second position with 109,000. Well, i got to tell you, Vince, I really like the way Jose is playing today. He's come from the bottom man to the chip leader, and deservedly so. And old Mo is certainly on his side. No, he knows how to bluff. He knows what he's doing here. He's playing great. By the way, the crowd is still rooting for Luis. Signs being held up, still, still trying to pump him up. And Luis folds, Jamie folds. Jose, Jose calling with a 10-7 off suit. And Dewey checks. Dewey has an interesting 7-4 of clubs. And here's Black the flop. Six, Look at this five, flop three, for Dewey. 6-5-3 with huge. two clubs. Jose he flopped checks. a cinch straight. Look at this, and he's betting it. And a straight flush draw. He's and not going to sandbag six, this seven. one. He's betting right out. And he leads out and bets this hand. <laughs> now, Jose has an inside straight draw. And a 10. He has He's a gut shot straight draw. I mean, it, everything's going his way. He's on a heater. He's going to try to catch lightning. Okay, here's the flop. Next card is an 8. Now he's made an open end straight. That's right, open end straight draw. That Dewey's so excited. Look at him. Look at him trying to keep his cool here. Now notice Dewey has a 7-4 of clubs, which means he's got 4, 5, 6, 7 of clubs in addition to his 8 high straight That's here. right, that's right. He's got a, a monster know. hand here. How do you bet it? Look at him. It looks go, like a, Dewey, go. Looks like a college professor. Yeah. You know, Dewey used to teach kindergarten. He's trying to look like the professor here. Well, he made a nice solid bet here. Now look at Jose. He's on a nice roll. He's got an open in straight right now. No big hand. Does he want to gamble here to try to make a straight here to beat Dewey? Is he thinking about raising bets? What do you think he's thinking about here? Well, Dewey set him up beautifully because Dewey was in a great position. He wants him to think that he has a bigger pair, maybe an over pair or something like that. And uh, by betting it, he's representing that and not the straight. So he's got him confused. Well, he's on a roll. He wants to keep it going, but he doesn't know what to do. Against Dewey, the conservative player, he opts to throw his hand away. A nice lay down by Jose there. He called a bet. He flopped a better card on 4th Street to give him a better chance to win the pot, yet he laid it down when Dewey bet on 4th Street. A nice lay down by Jose Rosencrantz there. Well, Dewey, who's been just hanging on virtually all day long, has finally made a mild move here now to tighten the race up a little bit. Well, this guy knows what to do. Throws away ace jacks, keeps sevens, fours, and he's successful. Now, Jose doesn't have much of a hand, throws it away. Dewey with a 9-7 offsuit mucks his hand. And Luis is going to go up. Look at this. He's got a strong hand. Ace, queen, he makes a solid raise. And he's run into a big hand. Jamie is looking at two jacks. He grabs all his chips and he bangs them in the table. Absolutely. He's doing the right thing. He's going all in. And Luis calls quickly. What the heck does he have to lose? This is going to be interesting. The action is heating up down here in Costa Rica. Don't go away. We'll be right back on the World Poker Tour. Welcome back to the World Poker Tour and the Costa Rica Poker Classic. Now, when we started the day, it looked like a foregone conclusion that Luis Milanis was going to win this thing going away. Well, Vince, as you know, anything can happen in poker. And Luis has faced the short stacks time and time again and has come up short each time so far today. And right now, the mountain could be coming down. Let's see how he fares against Jamie Ligator and his wired jacks. Okay, here we go. Here's the flop. No, it's not going to help Louise as of yet. Luis is going to have to have an ace or a queen that's not a club to win this pot. And now a 10 comes off. Now that means if Luis catches an ace, queen, or jack, Jamie Ligator will be eliminated from this competition. Let's see what happens. It's a six. Jamie Ligator doubles up, and Luis has been crippled again. 
big blow to Luis with an ace queen. Yes, it was, but Luis had a hand there. Now, I do not fault Luis for playing that hand. He was even money to win that pot, actually a slight underdog, but not much. It's what we call a race and no limit hold'em. It comes up all the time, two over cards versus a pair. In this case, the pair held up. Jamie Ligator won the pot. He has doubled up and put another dent in Luis's stack. And look at Luis here. He looks very depressed. Looks like he wants to fire a few of his employees. <laughs> he looks like a sad puppy, Vince, no doubt about it. Doesn't he? But he's picked up an interesting hand here. He has a queen 10 offsuit. And he's going to play it, Mike. Back in the fire. Jamie folds the jack nine offsuit. Now Jose looks. Now Jose has a queen jack. And he's going to call. He calls three more thousand. Three -way We're going to have a three way action pot now. Dewey's coming in nine six offsuit. Let's see the flop. The flop is. And now the flop comes king eight six. Now Dewey has the bottom pair. Let's see what he does. Well, Jose's going to check it. Dewey's checking his pair of sixes. Luis is going for it with nothing. Yep. They both checked. Luis has bet the worst hand. Jose has the button. Hey. They fold. He's going to win this pot. Okay. A little bluff there by Luis. Coming back. The crowd loves it. Hey, they're not quitting on him, his fans. They don't give up on him. He picks up the blinds. That's right. He's on the long road back. Big smile. He needs it. <laughs> He's fan appreciative. He's just thrilled to be at this final table, Vince, I can tell you. This is the biggest moment in his poker career. For him to make the final table in this championship, the World Poker Tour event here at Casinos Europa, has got to be the greatest thrill that he will ever experience in the poker world. Sure. And speaking of thrills of a lifetime, Vince, Shauna Hyatt met a young woman, an amateur player from Dallas, Texas, whose story in this tournament can almost match Luis's thrill for thrill. Thanks, Mike. Poker is the most democratic of sports. Anyone can play with the pros. All they need is a lot of money and a sense of adventure. My name is Cyclona Gowan. I'm a travel agent. I own a travel agency in Dallas, Texas. Well, that feels good. Woo! People call me Cloney. I play poker with a bunch of friends. We play, you know, once a week. I do play in some tournaments. Nothing big, nothing like this. Yesterday, she was just a travel agent on vacation. Today, she's the 10th place finisher in the Costa Rica Classic. This is God lucky. It took more than just luck. It took nerve. I threw up five times last no. night. Skill. Money has once again gone all in. And something her poker hero, Chris Ferguson, saw in her. She had the ball to win this tournament. Yeah, it was obvious. Of course, no travel agent would go to Costa Rica and only play poker. Cloney also saw the sights. We took the canopy tour. That was so amazing. Zipping across the jungle, 200 feet above the rainforest floor, and having a howling monkey stuff in the trees. There's so many wonderful things to do, and then poker just makes it that much more. And I've played my best game that I think I've ever played. And I feel so privileged to play with all the guys that I've played with and met so many different people. It's just been so wonderful. Well, it was a perfect fit for me. I mean, being here in Costa Rica and playing poker, that's just heaven. I mean, absolute heaven. My third time here, and I love this country. It is so wonderful. This is a wonderful country, and it's going to be that much more wonderful for the guy that wins the $108,000 first prize here. That's for sure. And here we go, and it's going to be up to Jose this time. And now he's picked up an ace, ace four, and he's going to raise with it, rightfully so. Jose he's come in for 15,000. Dewey folds, Luis folds. And look at this. Holy Jamie has picked holy. up a big duke, an ace king. Jamie he's grabbing all his in. chips. Oh, man, ace king, big slick. You got to love it, four-handed. He's going all in. Now notice he stands up, he's done his job, he's got his chips in the pot. He's saying, okay, I can't do any more now, let's see what happens. Yeah, yeah, he's standing up. Now because of the hesitation, he knows he's in front now with an ace king. I'm really surprised Jose's taking so such a long time. He has an ace high, but it's a weak ace, as we say. It's just an ace four. I just can't believe he's, he's thinking about calling this. Well, there's a lot at stake here. This is big for these guys. Well, it's big for these guys because it's in their home country, Vince. We're in Costa Rica. Jose's going to throw it away. Three out of these four players are from Costa Rica. They're up against the top American players. They really, really want to win this event in their home country. Okay, Jamie takes the pot. 
He's a little bit relieved, but then on the other hand, he's saying, you know, maybe I wanted that action. But it's always good to take a pot, and he's still alive. Much more poker to come from Costa Rica here on the World Poker Tour. Back to the action at the Costa Rica Classic in beautiful San Jose, Costa Rica. I'm Mike Sexton along with Vince Van Patten. And Vince, look at this. With that last pot, Jamie Ligator has taken a $1,000 chip lead over Jose Rosencrantz. Look at this. They're chanting. They're chanting, but it's not for the winner, Jamie. It's for Luis. They're trying to rally him. He's been on the downslide. Trying to get him back to the top of the ladder. He's got friends out there. He's got employees out there. They're all there rooting for him. Okay, it's going to be on Luis first. And he's picked up an ace, five, a diamond. All in, he says, Vince. There you go, Luis. All in. Why not? He's gambling here, Vince. Jose's out. Dewey folds. He's going to win this pot. But you know what's amazing is that Dewey had an ace, ten. It's a pretty strong hand. He just chucked it really quick. Well, I tell you, as we've seen all day long, Dewey hasn't played ace jacks, ace tens, ace eights. He just mucks those hands. But notice, Vince, he's still sitting there. Well, this Dewey really is a very interesting player. I mean, he mixes it up so beautifully, at times extremely tight, at times a little crazy. He is truly a world champion. We're watching quite an exhibition. Okay, the action is going to be on Jamie here. Jamie's going to go out. Jose has a six and a king of clubs. Pretty good hand. What's he going to do with it? Well, he's in position. He's on the button. He's just calling. He's limping in on the button. Dewey with a king nine calls three more thousand. Okay. Now here's Luis. Luis. Now he's going all he in. He says all in. He went all in. Now he had a queen jack. With a notice, queen. And notice both his opponents had king high. They had better hands than he did. Yeah, he just has a queen and a jack off suit, two different suits. He goes all in. You know, this guy is the Costa Rica gunslinger. Look at this. He's, he's getting excited. The crowd's getting excited. Well, he's earning these pots because both times Dewey Tomko's had a better hand than he has. Yet the chips have gone in Luis's stack because he's not afraid to move them in there. And I just said in Spanish, Mike Sexton taught me that when I was a little boy. <laughs> Well, the action's on Dewey here. He picks up a 9-8 off suit. Okay. Now, you think he, now, look at this. He's going to go all in with a 9-8 off suit, Mike. He's gone all in for 22,000. Luis has a king-8 off suit. He folds. Cold stone bluff being attempted here by Dewey. Now, Jamie has ace high here. And he folds. Now, this is very interesting. First of all, Jose's got a dilemma here. Dewey's been playing so solid, so much like the Phantom, that this type of play could be very interesting here. Well, Vince, what Jose is thinking about here, he's got a queen six offsuit, not a good hand at all. It cost him 14000 more to call. He knows there's $34,000 in chips sitting in the pot. It cost him 14000 to call here. He knows he's going to have to, in his mind, get lucky to beat Dewey here, but you have a chance to take Dewey out of the tournament. Dewey is sweating this out, this bluff. <laughs> Well, I don't blame Dewey for moving in because he's sort of desperate. He's a low stack. He's got to make a move here soon. He was in the big blind the very next deal, so he opted to move all in. Dewey's just praying, go away, Jose, go away. Yes, and he did. Yes, he did. <laughs> well done, Dewey. All right. Dewey picks up the pot. Look at this. The man doesn't even sweat. Well, Vince, your man, Luis the gunslinger, with his aggressive style, has now forged his way back to the chip lead, but we have a... Good horse race, and Dewey's the low man right now. He's going to have to make a move shortly here. The action is going to be on Luis. Okay, Luis looks at a queen and a five off suit. He's going to throw that pretty poor hand away. Jamie folds. 
And look at this. Jose's going all in with a king queen. He has a king queen of spade. He's in a small blind, a big hand. He quickly moves all in. And Dewey quickly calls. Nice hand for Dewey Tomko. He's picked up ace queen of clubs. Huge hand for Dewey. Absolutely. He's in front with the ace queen of clubs. What's going to happen here? He's in a dominating position here to exactly where he needs to be to get back into this tournament. Here comes the flop. Whoa. Oh, no. A nightmare flop for Dewey Tomko. Huge. Jose has gotten lucky with a pair of kings. Look at Dewey. He has been body slammed. He is stunned. He's not even moving. This is the interesting thing. Look at this poker face. He's not even moving. He just doesn't know what to do. He needs an ace. A miniature shock here. Still has a chance. No. And you know what? The spade's going to get there. It's over for Dewey. The glasses come off. He's getting up. He's a good sport. He's trying to force a smile, but this, this is the worst thing. It's a torturous feeling when someone hits that king on you, makes the pair of kings. He's smiling. He played brilliantly, but this is one man in shock. Well, Vince, as the legendary Johnny Moss used to say, all you can do is get your money in with the best hand. Dewey Tomko certainly did it there. Fate and luck simply weren't on his side. Jose, very lucky today in that yellow canary shirt. He's been outdrawing players. He's been pushing players around. This could be his day. We're down to three players at the Costa Rican Classic. Now, Dewey, we're down to our three Costa Ricans. The crowd's going crazy, Vince. We got these signs. There's cheering going on. This is some atmosphere for poker. A lot of great players from America came down here to play in this classic, and they're all on the rail watching these three Costa Ricans battle for this title. Okay, now this is interesting. Jose's back to work. He has a four-jack offsuit, but he's going to raise. He's doing a bluff here. He sure is. Now, here's Luis with a king-queen, a nice hand. Jose raises to 21,000. He's just going to call it. And he's called 17,000 more. Jamie's out. So we got a pop between Jose and Luis. Now, three handed, you got to take some chances. You got to make some bluffs, and that's what Jose's trying to do. Let's see if he gets lucky. The flop is queen Ooh. seven. Five. Flop comes queen seven five. Luis has the top pair. Absolutely. And he checks. He's going to try to trap him here. Let's see if Look Jose bites. He does it this time. Turn card is the three. Now look at this. Three, deal. three comes out there, and here comes Luis firing Luis out 22,000. 22, and now Jose looks like he's thinking about calling this. He has a belly buster straight draw. Luis, now that old belly buster, what, if you don't know what that is, that means you have an inside straight draw. And right now, Jose would like to bust Luis's belly right now. <laughs> and that's a big belly to bust. <laughs> <laughs> Well, is it worth it? I mean, you I have one that. shot. You know you can break him if you catch it. What do you do, Mike? Well, he has to catch a six to win this pot. It looks like he's thinking about it. I can't believe he's thinking about calling this. Either call or just go all in and make a semi-bluff. But he's not going to do it. No, he doesn't do it. Luis Look at Luis. He looks... Luis, and the crowd goes crazy here. Look oh, at him now. Oh, the arms over the head <laughs> like a champion boxer. Luis is excited. The crowd is excited. This guy is fun. I mean, he loves to play poker. He's the guy that brought big-time poker down here. He brought this classic to Costa Rica. He's got a chance to win his own tournament, Vince. You call him an amateur, but this guy can really play as good as anyone. That's why he's what? He's in second place right now. Very cagey play. No, he is a chip leader with that putt. Very good. You know, the crowd is great. I mean, it's great to have that kind of backing. It's fantastic, Vince, here. It's like the crowd at a football stadium trying to rally their team to victory here. You know what? They love him here now. It's up to Jamie first. He has six king off suit. Now, you got to play a lot more aggressive when it's down to three-handed. Jamie folds. Now here comes Jose calling out of the big blind to see a flop. Four more thousand with a king deuce. And Luis has a seven king in his hand. Let's see the flop. And here comes a flop. Ace, ten, seven. Oh, it's up to Jose first. Look at this. How, wait, wait, how does he, what is he doing? 22,000. He leads out in bets. And he's getting Luis to show his hand and throw it away. Now, Luis has a bottom pair and throws his hand away. Now, how does Jose know that? Well, he knows because had he put 
Luis on an ace, he thinks that Luis would have raised him back before the flop. So he didn't think Jose had an ace, which is why he fired out confidently on that flop. When it comes ace 10-7, that's a championship play by Jose. A look at Luis, a smile to his fans. You know, he actually thinks he made a great lay down with the pair of sevens. Little does he know he had the best hand at this point. Ignorance is bliss sometimes. That's why Jose is smiling. He knows that he put a bluff on him that hand. <laughs> well, it's really come down to be a bluffer's game at this point. Luis looks at a nine deuce off suit, throws his hand away. Now here comes Jamie. Now Jamie's going all in with a king three. I love this guy. Look at this. Yep. He's doing it again. Look at his neck is twitching. Now, I think Jose has a decision here. He's got a queen-10 offsuit. Yes, he does. It cost him 23000 more to call. He's 43000 in the pot. He's the chip leader. He's got a chance to take out Jamie here. And he knows Jamie has to be making a move. He's probably making a move, so he does have a major decision. Well, he's getting 2-1 to one on his money here, Vince. He's got to throw it away, though. He mucks his hand there. I think a lot of players would have called there with a queen 10 to try to take out Jamie. Look at this, Jamie. For 23,000 more. But, yeah, you got to admire Jamie. He's not going to just whittle himself away. He's banging it all in there, Vince. What cojones he has. He just keeps pushing it in. I mean, you know the thing is, you can't wait for big slick anymore. You're down to three players. You got to push it around. All these guys know it. Well, you're right, Vince. That's tournament poker. You just cannot wait for the best hand to get your money in there all the time. The pros know it, and Shauna Hyatt got them to tell us why. Thanks, Mike. The majority of poker players understand how to play the game, but they don't fully appreciate how tournament poker is different. It's time again for another WPT Poker Corner. I've done a lot of gambling in my life, but tournaments are different. In a regular live game, you can be conservative by waiting forever to get the great hands. It's boring but it's certainly less of a gamble. In tournaments, you don't have that luxury. Sometimes being too disciplined makes you a target. Remember that the blinds and antes keep skimming away at your stack. Okay, the price of over 2,000 blinds, 1,500, three blinds are now 2 and 4,000. The blinds have gone up to 3 and 6,000. The limit is going up now. 5 Four and $10,000 blind. $12,000. When they raise up every hour, that means they eat away at you even more. Jamie, he's been playing a long, long time. So he knows that you can't sit there. If the antes goes up, he knows you got to move the chips. I start playing reckless like Don Luis. If you try to wait around for aces, you'll run out of money. The size of your stack dictates your play. All in. When you have a lot of chips, you can afford to be patient. When you're short stacked, you've got to gamble. Of course, you always adjust your game to your chips, to your table position, and also, of course, to the players, what, you, what you're playing against. That's part of the game. You can't give up just because you're low on chips. You gotta go in and try to get some chip, you know? You gotta make move now. You just can't sit back and worry you're gonna get knocked out. Hey, if you're not willing to take a chance, maybe you should switch to checkers. All right, this time Jamie's going to be first to speak. You know, oh, here he goes again. Look at this. Again, he's all in. He is not going to be milk toast here. He is actually trying to win this tournament. He's banging his chips out there to get back in the hunt with these guys. He is going to catch up quick if he continues to win these blinds and annies. Look at Jamie's very happy. He's laughing. You ever notice how a player, when you're winning... Everything seems really funny. You laugh. You're making jokes, telling jokes. Yeah, everything's funny when you got plenty of money, Vince. <laughs> well, he's playing great, real aggressive, which you have to be when you're down to three hands. Three-handed poker, you have to be real aggressive. It's okay. paying off. The action is on Jose. Here he picks up an ace-deuce offsuit on the button. And he's going to raise it. Sure, why not? Luis folds. Now, Jose made a very nice raise there, in my opinion. He doubled the blind. Uh, Jamie just has a seven Jose jack of spades. Interesting hand. A callable hand. Now, he just bluffed the last few hands. What's he going to do with this? Is he, this guy likes to bluff and not call. Well, notice that he's a little bit leery because the raise was just doubled, which Jamie indicates some strength him. sometimes. Yeah, he's not going to call. He throws his hand away. Jose nice play by Jose there. I really like that raise. This will be the last Well, he had ace high. Like we said before, he makes his own luck. I mean, he does mix it up real well. I tell you, Vince, this guy is playing great today. He's playing like a champion, no question about it. Luis is in position on the button. Price of poker has gone up. 
Jamie's been on a nice little roll here lately. Just like Dave said. <laughs> and Luis, and the action is on him. Okay, now he's just picked up a pretty good hand. 10 ace, he's going all in. All in, no holding back. Jamie folds, and Jose quickly says, Cole, he's got two kings in the pocket. The dream hand, he calls him. Oh my, he's got the two kings in his hand. The two cowboys, whatever you want to call them. That is a huge blow to Luis. He's a big favorite right now. Ace 10 against pocket kings. It's ace 10 against pocket kings. He needs a miracle out draw. And he got it, Vince. He has got it. It come 10 10, Jack. Look at Luis. Look. Luis, the casino <laughs> owner, has just hit three of a car with an ace. It is a miracle draw. Whoa, he's he hit. cannot believe it. Neither can the crowd. He's made 30 miles, but it's not over. Jose's dejected. He can still catch a king to win this pot, though. Oh, man. Jose is sick about this. Look at Luis. Oh, no. A king. Look at this. Can you believe it? Look at Luis. Look. Look at him. He's hollering at the dealer. How can you do that to me? Miracle upon miracle. In the meantime, Jose is excited. He has made kings full. Luis is going to have to catch a 10 to win this pot now. He said, look, give me my 10. You gave him his king. This is absolutely ridiculous. Can he catch the one card out of the deck? It would have to be a 10 to stay alive. What an amazing pot. Luis moves all in. He gets called by Kings. It's going to be a 10-9. It's not. It's, it's not. nine. <laughs> He's not going to do it. Luis is out of this tournament. Luis, the gunslinger, has blazed his last bullets in this tournament. Oh, I have never seen a hand like that. Now, that was exciting, Vince. That is poker. That was agony to ecstasy and the turn of a card. And Louise, the look on his face when he caught the 10, he looked to the crowd. It was a beautiful thing. There was so much love in this room. And in seconds later, Wait. turned around so quickly. Well, Jose, go through his emotions. Think about his emotions. So dejected, you see your opponent flop three tens when he got two kings, and then a king to come off, where now you're ecstatic again. Unbelievable, dramatic action here on the World Poker Tour. Well, it's a dream flop. You got two kings, first of all, before the flop. How do you pick up two kings three-handed? <laughs> Luis, Luis goes out. He staggers next to the pole out there. Well, he's been lucky all tournament. He thought it was going to continue. He's a little punch drunk right here after that hand. He's walking into walls back there. Had he not caught the tens, you know, it wouldn't have been, you wouldn't have felt the pain that he's feeling right now. But he had him for a second there. He had the pot won. And the tournament in his pocket, virtually had he won that pot. And for an instant, he thought he had done it. Oh, man, he's stunned. He's going to probably have to walk down to the safe and put his pants through all the extra money he has in the casino to get over this because <laughs> this is a tough, tough beat. Well, he did take home $25,120 to add to that safe, but I know it was the title was all he cared about. We are down to our final two players in Costa Rica. Who will take home this title? Don't miss the exciting conclusion of the Costa Rica Classic on the World Poker Tour. Oh, Edward, no, no, please don't come in. I know this must be difficult for you, and it's really not your fault. But I've met Troy now, and intellectually, he's more on my plane. You got a plane? Bad poker face. Doesn't matter when you play online at PartyPoker.com. It's fun, it's easy, it's the world's largest poker room. Twin engine? Welcome back to San Jose, Costa Rica, and the Casinas Europa Costa Rica Classic. I'm Vince Van Patten. And I'm Mike Sexton. And Vince, would you look at this? As a tradition on the World Poker Tour, this. all the tournaments bring in the prize money in some inordinate fashion. But I believe this is going to be hard to top right here in Costa Rica. Look at this. The oxen are coming. You know, in Spain, they run with the bulls. In Costa Rica, you walk with the oxen. Here comes the cash, look at this. Cash right on the tabletop. Our beautiful host, Shauna Hyatt, is putting all the cash on the table, stacking it beautifully. Well, this is quite a scene, look at this. They're bringing the money, they're dumping it out, it's coming to baskets. 
Now Luis, who finished third, has now come out to dump the prize money on the table. Hey! He's throwing the money into the crowd. He doesn't care anymore because it's not his. <laughs> well, Vince, this is it. The two Costa Ricans have come down for the heads-up battle of the duel in the jungle. Absolutely. It's mano a mano. It's a street fight, a gunfight at the OK Corral. These guys are going out. Now, don't forget, Jose has over 300,000 worth of chips, and Jamie just doesn't have that many chips. He's got to play real fast at this point. Now, even though there's only a $60,000 difference between first and second, it's the prestige of winning this title. Jamie's not messing around. He's going all in right here in the first hand. Yeah, absolutely right. He has an ace-10. He's got a big hand here. Jose's got a decision. Now, Jose said to count it. So that means he's going to contemplate calling, even though he's got a king five off suit here. Look at this look. He's trying to detect yeah. something, and, and Jamie Gensis, just comes back yeah. and says, what, what do you want to know? Yeah. You know? What are you looking at me for? You're the big fish here. He looks back at his hand. He knows he's getting, there's 57000 in the pot, costs him 37000 to call, but he knows he's got a chance to take the man out if he gets lucky and wins this pot. He doesn't know the king's not the best hand. It's a tough decision right here. He's got the chips where he can afford to make this call. But do you really want to double your opponent up? He's calling it. He is calling it. He does it. it. Okay, He's going for the gusto right here. He's Jamie. going for it all. The title the here. Jose. The shot at the Bellagio Championship worth King millions. What's going to happen? Jamie now, Jamie right stands now. up. He prays. He closes his eyes. Look. He loves it. It's he knows to, right he, now he's in position a, where he can double up. A stack of chips just, uh, of cash just <laughs> fell out on the table. They don't know where to put it anymore. <laughs> it's uh, tons of money on the table here. Uh, over a quarter of a million. Here's a flop. 993. So, Jamie. Now, Jamie likes that because that doesn't help Jose. Jose sits back down. The ace 10 is still in front at this point. A six comes off. Jose needs to catch a king or a five. Jamie's not sitting down till this till he wins this pot. A deuce comes off. It's a deuce, so Jamie's gonna stay alive. Well done with the ace 10. He's excited. He's doubled up. He's feeling good. Now Jose. He's probably saying to himself, geez, I wish I hadn't called that right there. I could have saved that 37000 Okay. On the other hand, he went for it. He tried to take him out. He still has a two-and-a-half-to-one chip lead, so he's in a commanding position. However, his opponent now has a spark of confidence. Look at the great Doyle Brunson, the great poker player. Played with 10 deuce in wins tournaments. Why not a king five? I mean, you could win with that. Hey, it was a tough decision for him right there. You know, he had the chips where he could make that call. On the other hand, do you want to double the, your opponent up? You know, what would you viewers have done? What would you have done had you been in that seat with a king five? Would you have called? Would you have thrown your cards away? That's the beauty of the World Poker Tour. You get to make these decisions right along with these great players. And now, even though Jose had a commanding chip lead when they're playing heads up, Jamie just doubled up. You're right. Absolutely right. But things can change quickly. It's going to be up to Jose to act first. He looks at a 9-10 in his hand. He's in position, and he calls. Now, Jamie has a queen-6. Nothing spectacular at this point. Let's see the flop. Flop comes king-queen-5. Okay, now this is interesting. Jose... As a 9-10 queen-king, nothing. But Jamie has a pair of queens with a six high. Look at this. Jose is betting. Jamie's going to throw the queens away. I don't get this, Mike. Well, that's a pretty amazing play. Jose bet with a belly buster straight draw. That was all he had. He didn't take the free card off there. He opted to bet. And Jamie folded the second pair. Now, that's bizarre to me. Now, Vince, i got to tell you, a lot of players would not have bet that 9-10 there. They'd have tried to get the free card to make the straight. You have to admire Jose for betting there and earning that pot. Well, we've been seeing him do that all night long here. He does play really aggressive. He sensed a little weakness. And I still can't believe that Jamie just threw those, those queens away and so quickly. Okay, Jamie's on the button here. Okay, he's picked up a big hand. He's got ace-10, and he is raising strong. He's moved all in, and look at Jose. He's picked up two jacks. He says, I call very quickly. This is what it comes down to, this kind of hand. We're going to see a huge battle here. This is ace-10 versus two jacks. This is the exact same hand that Luis went out on, an ace-10. Let's see if Jose can do it again. Two jacks against ace-10. Jose's about a two-and-a-half-to-one favorite. If he holds up, he'll be our champion. Here's a flop. A four and a seven. <laughs> Having trouble getting that third card out, but it's a six. It is not a help for Jamie at this point. The Jacks are in front at this point. Okay. Fourth Street, no. The atmosphere is electric, Vince. One more card. We could have a champion. 
If a three or eight comes off, notice he'll split the pot. Jamie will need an ace to win this pot. Can he get this ace? They're going to burn and they're going to turn. He needs an ace. No! No, it's a deuce. Jose knows he's done it. What a great moment for Jose Rosencrantz. He's played fantastic poker. The crowd goes crazy. Jose cheers. He's hugging everybody. A fantastic performance today by Jose Rosencrantz. He picked up some big hands. He made some great plays. This is a great moment for Jose. Very thrilling. To Jose Rosencrantz, the Costa Rica Classic Champion, the pride of Costa Rica tonight. I'm Mike Sexton, thanking all of you for joining us at the Costa Rica Classic, and we look forward to seeing you again on the World Poker Tour.